So for today, we did a bunch of review of uh, basics on algebra first, but now we're into the meat of it. You've got to be able to do this, and so you got to understand that that part comes out positive because it's a distance. Distance from zero, and that is three. And then this negative that is still there in the front means the opposite of that answer, so the answer is negative three. All right, will that same kind of thing work if there's a square root? You can't do square roots of negatives. Like, I hope you know that. You can't do the square root of negative 25, but you can do the negative of the square root of 25. What's the square root of 25? 5, and then you just make a negative. Okay. Do you get the difference then with you can't do this? Now, we actually will talk about this because this is the honors class, but it won't be today. This is introduces the concept of an imaginary number. And so I know it's weird. It's like, ah, you just make it stuff up now. But we'll talk about imaginary numbers a different day. What we will talk about for sure is square roots like this that don't work out nice. Because everybody knows if I'd have said square root of 9, it would be 3. But what about if it's like the square root of 8? Well then, what we want you to be able to do is say two things. Number one, estimate it in your head. Because you're not, remember, no calculators in here. Isn't that pretty close to the square root of 9? Yeah, the square root of 9 would be 3. So is this going to be a little more or a little less than that? A little less than 3. So if you can say that's a little less than 3, good, good enough. But how about exactly what is it? Well, then you have to do this. That's root 4 and root 2. Do you agree if I multiplied them together, it'd still be root 8? And look at that. I factored it again. It always comes down to factor. And now what is the square root of 4? That one works out. Hello. Two. <coughs> I think you did this. You may possibly cut it out during COVID or something, but did you guys do those? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So that is called simplifying a root, and these are also called uh, radicals. All right. Now, what if I had two root twos? and I add three root twos. At first, this looks really confusing, but if you just say it to yourself, I have two root twos, and I add three root twos, what do you think I have? Five root twos. Yep. Now I can show you how factoring actually works on this. Do you get they both have a root two in them? I can pull it out to the front, and I can say that what's left is 2 plus 3. <gasps> Look at that. 5 root 2s. Always comes down to factory. Okay. So what if I said square root of 50? Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but I can tell you it's really close to square root of 49, which would have been 7. So what would you say? Is this 7? No, is it like maybe 7.1 or something like that? A little more than that? Yeah, see? Okay, and then get the exact answer. Break it up into two things, and then maybe you have to break it up again. Just break it up as much as you have to until you get an answer like 7 root 3. I hope you root, used root 2 and root 25, because it will go a lot better than root 5 and root 10. Because, see, root 5 and root 10, neither one of them work out nice. This one works out nice. And always put the whole number in front when you're done. Do you see why I gave it 5 root 2? Okay. Cool. <clears throat> is that the same as 5 plus root 2? No. 5 times root 2 is completely different, of course. Could I cancel the 5s in this situation? No, you could not. Why? because it's adding. What if this was snugged up against the root 2? Then it would mean it was multiplied. Could I cancel then? Yep. Yes, I could. So it'd just be square root of 2. All right. There's not too much left. If I said square root of 64, I hope you could do it in your head. What is it? Eight. 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 Did you know that this whole time there was a little 2 right there and your teacher was never writing it. 
If you didn't know that, that's officially how you write the square root of 64. I'm not kidding. They've just been simplifying it for you by not putting anything there. But now that you know that there was actually a little 2 there, what if I put a little 3 there? Is that going to be the same thing? No. Now, I know you probably haven't memorized this one, but can you think it through? Say it if you know it. 4. 4, very good. Because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 4 times 4 is 16, and then 16 times 4. And I know, you might be like, how am I supposed to know that? Well, you could probably use logic and go, is it 2 times 2 times 2? Uh, no, that's 8. Is it 3 times 3 times 3? No, that's 27. Is it 4 times 4 times 4? 4 times 4 is 16 times 4. Ooh, maybe. And it is. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't give you, like, what's the cube root of 753, okay? The biggest one I think I'd ever give you is the cube root of 125. Can anybody do that one in your head? Five. Five, very good. Plus five times five times five is 125. All right, so there'll be some cube roots today. There'll be some square roots. There won't be any of these yet because those are imaginary. But there'll definitely be things where there's a negative here. And then remember, the answer is just the opposite of what it would have been. This would have been 8, so it's negative 8. All right. Okay, that's it, boys and girls. So, pretty easy day. Talked about a whole bunch of algebra because I knew today was going to be really easy. There's a Schoology quiz. It's got 20 questions. If you don't finish before the end of the hour, I will be shocked. It should be easy to finish before the end of the hour. There's tons of easy questions in there. The way I do Schoology quizzes is I always give you two tries and the average of the two scores. Because at the end of the first try, I will show you the answers. I hate knowing that I have a problem wrong but not knowing what the right answer is. Like, that drives me nuts. So I do that, I give you that favor that at the end of all my Schoology quizzes, after the first try, you get all the answers. But if I just give you the better score then, do you get a lot of kids will just like put in super quick crap answers first try, and then they'll get the answers, and then they just type them in and get a perfect paper. Then that doesn't, that, that doesn't really mean anything then. Okay, so the way I do it is I give you the average of the two scores. So if you try on the first try, and let's say you get 8 out of 10, or 7 out of 10, or even 6 out of 10, isn't, you know, that, that's pretty bad, but 6 out of 10 wouldn't be that bad. And then you get a 10 out of 10 because you do it again after you've seen all the answers, you'll probably get them right. You're 6 out of 10, and you're 10 out of 10, will average an 8 out of 10. So they pretty much can always get a B, as long as you try the first time. Okay, so you'll get the average of the two scores. If you ever feel like you had a correct answer that Schoology marked wrong, now I don't mean like, I just forgot the negative, no, then that's wrong. But if you actually have an answer that's correct, and Schoology is marking it wrong, and you're like, wait a minute, I know this is right, tell me and I'll fix the key, and I'll give you the point, okay? But schools, by now, we've used these quizzes for a while. They're pretty good. We usually know all the mistakes that are in them, and we've usually already fixed them. So, but if you catch a new mistake, all right, let's do the first couple. Uh, who has got number one visible? Just just read me number one, and make that class go quickly. Yes, thank you. Cubed? No, sorry, squared. squared. Okay. So if it's negative 5 squared, then I got to know whether that comes out to be negative five, uh, 25 or positive 25. And a lot of people don't. But I did mention yesterday, I mentioned this yesterday, but a lot of people do know that it is positive 25. If those parentheses weren't there, do you get it would be different? Yeah. If the parentheses weren't there, then you'd be doing the 5 squared and putting the negative on later. So parentheses matter a lot in this class. All right, I think you got the idea. Just keep marching through that Schoology quiz. You'll probably finish it before the hour's over. If you get stuck anywhere in the middle, please come on up and ask for help. And that's all I got for you for today.